a very good morning to one and all today we are here to discuss about the one of the spectroscopic methods that is the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy this is also called as the nmr spectroscopy right the first point in this is that it is an absorption spectroscopy right if you place a sample it is an absorption spectroscopy right if you place a sample and subject it to the electromagnetic radiations right since it is an absorption spectroscopy it will definitely absorb some part of the electromagnetic radiations which you are passing through the sample right so it is observed that the part of the electromagnetic radiation which is absorbed by the sample it lies between the 3 megahertz up to the 30000 megahertz and this region or this uh, frequency it falls under the region of the radio waves hence we can say that the nmr spectroscopy it is observed or it is analyzed in the radio waves region right it was first observed by prusil and bolch bloch in 1945 and the first sample which they analyzed or which they studied it was ethanol right sabse pehla sample jis pe nmr ki study hui thi that was ethanol they have first studied the nmr for the ethanol right so what is this nmr spectroscopy as the name indicates that is the nuclear magnetic resonance it means what the nuclei they undergo the resonance in presence of the magnetic field that is why it is called as the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy okay so which nuclei undergoes the resonance kaun se nuclei hain jo hame nmr dikhate hain क्या सारे ही न्यूक्लियाई हमें एनएमआर दिखाते हैं नो सो द न्यूक्लियाई ऑफ सम आइसोटोप्स राइट दैट पॉजिस द मैकेनिकल स्पिन दैट इज ऑल्सो कॉल्ड एज द न्यूक्लियर spin quantum number right and it is denoted by i and this i it is the vector combination of spins of the proton and the neutron राइट प्रोटॉन्स और न्यूट्रॉन्स के स्पिन का जब आप वेक्टर कॉम्बिनेशन करोगे देन यू विल गेट न्यूक्लियर स्पिन क्वांटम नंबर दैट इज आई एंड इट हैज द वैल्यूज दैट इज इक्वल टू जीरो वन बाय टू वन थ्री बाय टू फाइव बाय टू एंड सो ऑन राइट सो द न्यूक्लियाई विच हैज i greater than 0 these are called as the charged nuclei right since they have this spin wo kya ho gaye hain charged nuclei ho gaye hain and since they are charged they undergoes some kind of the phenomenons so let us discuss what are they now this charged nuclei which has the i greater than 0 it starts to spin about its nuclear axis right this is the spinning motion of the nucleus and this is the nuclear axis 
right since the nuclei it spins around itself it develops the magnetic dipole around its nucleus right so there forms a dipole moment or the magnetic dipole around its nuclear axis right therefore these charged nuclei they behave as the tiny bar magnet right wo kaise behave kar rahe hain they are behaving as the tiny bar magnet which has the magnetic moment that is denoted by the mu right now in a particular sample there are lots of nuclei there are the n number of the nuclei which may have i greater than 0 right so these nuclei they are spinning around its own axis and therefore they are charged so all these nuclei they are oriented randomly right they are not aligned in some specific direction when this situation is it is in absence of the magnetic field right but what happens if we put some magnetic field along a particular direction this is the applied magnetic field that is denoted as the h0 right so when the magnetic field is applied all these randomly oriented nuclei they align themselves right either in the direction which is parallel to the applied field or in the direction which is opposite to the applied field right these are the two possible ways in which these nuclei can be oriented right so then when we study the nmr we usually study of the nmr active nuclei right since nmr is used for the analysis of mostly the organic compounds right and the organic compounds mainly comprises of the hydrogen and the carbon and hydrogen and ox and carbon they have the two active nuclei that is hydrogen 1 and carbon 13 right they are present and they show the i value that is equals to 1 by 2 since the i value is greater than 0 hence they are nmr active therefore they will definitely show us the nmr spectroscopy right so these nuclei which has i greater than 1 by 2 this usually so shows the number of orientations that is equal to 2i plus 1 if i calculate for hydrogen 1 and carbon 13 that has i is equal to 1 by 2 i'll get 2 into 1 by 2 plus 1 that comes out to be 2 that means these nuclei can be oriented in the two ways right let us see how they are oriented initially in the absence of the magnetic field they do not separate thus here we have i is equal to 1 by 2 but as soon as i apply the magnetic field right in this way i have applied magnetic field in presence of the magnetic field what happens the nuclei they orient either in the direction of the magnetic field or in the opposite direction suppose 
these are in the direction of the magnetic field right whereas these are opposite to that of the magnetic field right the one which is lower in the level that is the alpha and the one which is the higher energy state that is denoted by the beta alpha has a i value of plus 1 by 2 whereas beta has a i value of minus 1 by 2 right the difference between the alpha and the beta this is called as the delta e right the number of the nuclei that are present in the alpha level they are denoted by the n alpha and the number of the nuclei that are present at the beta energy state that is denoted as the n beta and it is always seen that the n alpha it is slightly greater than the n beta this is according to the boltzmann distribution law right this is also called as the boltzmann population now the difference between those two states that is the alpha and the beta which is denoted by the delta e it is equal to the this is equal to the equation that is h gamma upon 2 pi into h0 right since we know that energy is equal to h nu right so putting in the equation we have h nu is equal to h gamma upon 2 pi h0 here h on the both sides gets cancelled therefore we get the equation that is nu is equal to gamma upon 2 pi into h0 here h0 this is the applied magnetic field right gamma is the gyromagnetic ratio nu is the frequency h is the planck's constant right and nu here is the magnetic moment right let us name this equation as the equation 1 right here the gamma that is the gyromagnetic ratio this is equal to 2 pi mu upon h i right if i write it as the equation 2 and if i substitute the equation 2 in equation 1 right so here i get nu is equal to 2 pi mu upon h i into h 0 upon 2 pi since 2 pi is both above and below therefore it will get cancelled and i'll get the equation as nu is equal to mu upon h i into h 0 right if i substitute h here i'll get h nu is equal to mu into h0 upon i since for hydrogen 1 and carbon 13 i have i is equal to 1 by 2 putting the value here i have h nu is equal to 2 times of mu into h0 right and i know that h nu is equal to e that is the energy so from this equation i get the relation between the energy 
that is directly proportional to the applied magnetic field right this is a very important equation from here i can see that the energy that is the delta e the difference between the two states that is the alpha and the beta right this is directly proportional to the applied magnetic field it means that as i go on increasing the applied magnetic field the difference between the two energy levels will also increase right as you can see here when there is the low magnetic field right the difference is small but as i increase it the distance is further increasing in the similar way here you can see the delta e is further high and here it is further more higher it means from this diagram you can see that jaise jaise hum field strength ko badhate jayenge waise waise alpha aur beta ke beech mein ki jo energy hai wo bhi kya hogi wo badhti jayegi right so this is the case how you can see the two phenomenon that is the separation between the or the alignment of the nuclei against or parallel to the applied magnetic field right okay now let us discuss what is the theory or what is the principle of the nmr spectroscopy right क्या होगा इसका प्रिंसिपल वी हैव सीन दैट द चार्ज न्यूक्लियाई राइट इट स्पिन्स अराउंड इट्स न्यूक्लियर एक्सेस राइट बट व्हेन द एक्सेस दैट इज द न्यूक्लियर एक्सेस राइट दिस इज द न्यूक्लियर एक्सेस when this nuclear axis it is not exactly perpendicular or it is in the direction of the applied magnetic field right then definitely some force of the applied magnetic field it is required to pull it to the same direction right now as i have told that the nuclei starts spinning due to the spinning motion what happens the nuclei is tilted a bit away from the nuclear axis right thus here we have a different axis which is at a certain angle to the nuclear axis right so this is what this is the precessional orbit right whereas this is the nuclear axis right and the angle between this two this is called as the precessional angle right and this is my spinning nucleus which is undergoing the spin correct so what happens now the nucleus is continuously spinning and there is a difference between the precessional orbit and the nuclear axis right in which this nucleus is spinning so what happens here when the electromagnetic radiations are applied right which are exactly equal to this precessional frequency right that is when the precessional frequency when the precessional frequency of the nuclei it exactly matches with the frequency of the applied electromagnetic
radiations right when the two frequencies they exactly match each other the nuclei it moves from the lower energy state to the higher energy state right what will happen this nuclei will move to the higher energy level right this process that is the nuclei that jumps from the lower energy state to the higher energy state this is called as the flipping of nucleus what happens here the nuclei flips from the lower energy level wah jahan uska i value is plus 1 by 2 to the higher energy level where the i value is minus 1 by 2 therefore the process is called as the flipping of the nucleus right usually this phenomenon happens at the 60 megahertz frequency of the applied of the electromagnetic radiation at the field strength of 14092 gauss right this is for the h1 nuclei that is for the hydrogen nuclei whereas at the same field strength carbon nuclei requires 15 megahertz of the electromagnetic radiation at the same field strength right so itni energy itni field strength aur itni electromagnetic radiation ki frequency jab hum provide karenge tabhi the flipping of the nucleus from the lower level to the higher level it is possible correct and this phenomenon that is the flipping of the nuclei from the alpha to beta state it is only possible when n alpha is greater than the n beta as soon as this number of nuclei at both the levels becomes equal nmr is not observed right therefore we can say that the nmr it is a ground state phenomenon right jab number of nuclei ground state pe zyada rahenge tabhi hum nmr observe kar sakte hain right it means what it means the another step which is necessary is that the nuclei which has excited to the higher energy level it should also come back to the lower energy level and this process is called as the relaxation process right so this is how the principle of the nuclear magnetic resonance spectroscopy is right so what happens here as i have told you that the nuclei which is moving around its own axis that is called as the spinning motion right the nuclei is spinning at a particular frequency right when the frequency of the spinning nucleus that is the precisional frequency it exactly matches to the frequency of the electromagnetic radiations which are passed to it jab dono frequency exactly match karenge only at that point the nuclei flips from the lower energy level to the higher energy level right jab tak ye frequency match nahi karegi koi flipping of the nucleus nahi milega correct this is how the nuclear magnetic resonance happens right so here we plot a graph between the applied field strength right that is denoted by the yes that is denoted by the h0 and it is against the intensity of the 
peaks which will come after the absorption of the electromagnetic radiations right so here we observe the different peaks at different values right so this is how the nmr spectra looks like okay now you might be curious that kaun se nuclei hain jo nmr dikhate hain right so let us discuss about the nmr active nuclei right so what are this as i have already told you that the nuclei which has i greater than 0 they are what they are nmr active nuclei barabar so this can the value of i as i have told you that it depends on the nuclear um, the vector combination of the proton plus neutron that is the value of i it depends upon the atomic masses and the mass numbers right so let us see how it happens so here if i have a particular mass number then i have a atomic number right then i have a particular i value certain examples and let us see they are active or inactive right so when the mass number is odd right that is 1 3 5 and so on and the atomic number whether it is odd or even the i has the values that is 1 by 2 the example of this is h1 c13 f19 and so on it can also have a value that is equal to 3 by 2 and the example here is the boron 11 35 chlorine and so on and it can also have a value that is equal to 5 by 2 and the example here is iodine 127 17 oxygen and so on and all these are active they are nmr active since the i is greater than 0 now the second case if i have the even mass number and i have a even atomic number in this case the i value it turns out turns out to be zero right since the i value is zero they should be nmr inactive right the examples are the carbon 12 right 16 oxygen and so on now the third case here that comes out is the mass number is even and the atomic number is odd so here we get the integer value that is the 1 the examples here are the 14 nitrogen hydrogen 2 that is the deuterium right it can also have a value of 3 right the example here is boron 10 and even these are nmr active since the i value is greater than 0 so aapka nuclei nmr active hai ki nahi this you can find out with the help of the mass number and the atomic number the cases where both are even they are nmr inactive right where the mass number is odd and whatever is the atomic number even or odd you will always have this integral values right and if the mass number is even and the other is odd you will always get the integer values this is clear so now you are clear with which of the nmr nuclei are active and which of them are inactive right now let us move to the next interesting topic that is the equivalent and non equivalent protons 
right so this we are discussing in case of the h1 nmr okay so why do we need to learn equivalent and the non equivalent protons right kya batayenge wo hame so the main significance of this is that the number of signals that are obtained in the nmr spectroscopy it is directly proportional to the number of non equivalent protons in a molecule that means it is equivalent to the different kind of protons clear jitne alag alag tarike ke protons aapke paas rahenge utne number of signals aapko aapke nmr ke spectra mein milenge right so it is very important to know कि कौन से प्रोटॉन्स एक जैसे हैं और कौन से प्रोटॉन्स एक दूसरे से अलग हैं राइट इफ वी कम टू नो दैट दीज आर ऑफ द सेम काइंड एंड दीज आर ऑफ द अनदर टाइप वी कैन इजीली फाइंड आउट कि मेरे इस मॉलिक्यूल में मुझे कितने एनएमआर के सिग्नल्स मिलेंगे क्लियर फॉर एग्जांपल, इफ आई हैव टू प्रोटॉन्स राइट दे आर केमिकली इक्वेलेंट राइट इसका मतलब है कि उनके जो एनवायरनमेंट है वो कैसे हैं वो सेम है उनके जो केमिकल एनवायरनमेंट है दे आर व्हाट दे आर सिमिलर राइट इट मींस दैट दी द केमिकली इक्विवेलेंट प्रोटॉन्स और द न्यूक्लियाई दे हैव द सेम शिफ्ट वैल्यू राइट or they are the shift equivalent that is since the two protons are chemically equivalent it means that if one is a and another one is b and the a shows me a signal at the chemical shift value of the 2 ppm the b will also show me the peak at the 2 ppm that is jo chemically equivalent protons rahenge unka peak value jo rahega jahan pe unka peak aayega wo kaisa rahega wo same rahega right that is the chemically equivalent protons they are also the shift equivalent right That means उनकी जो shift की value रहेगी chemical shift की जो value रहेगी वो कैसी रहेगी वो same रहेगी right? Now how will you judge that the protons are equivalent, right? So how to judge them? कैसे करेंगे आप ये So what you have to do here is a very simple step that is you just have to mentally replace one of the hydrogen atom in the molecule right by some atom atom like z aur aapko dekhna hai ki aapko jo do नए मॉलिक्यूल्स मिले हैं वो सेम है या वो डिफरेंट है राइट इफ द रिजल्ट्स दैट इज द रिप्लेसमेंट रिजल्ट्स ठीक है देर इज नो चेंज मतलब क्या है वो दे आर सेम दैट मींस इट इज द केमिकली इक्विवेलेंट राइट right? अगर आपको कोई चेंज नजर नहीं आता है इसका मतलब ये है कि वो केमिकली इक्विवेलेंट है राइट right? और अगर आपको दो नए मॉलिक्यूल्स मिलते हैं दैट मींस द प्रोटॉन्स आर केमिकली नॉन इक्विवेलेंट क्लियर सो फॉर एग्जांपल लेट अस डिस्कस अ मॉलिक्यूल दैट इज द इथाइल क्लोराइड क्या है फॉर्मूला इथाइल क्लोराइड का 
it is CH3, CH2, Cl. Right? मुझे देखना है कि मेरे जो प्रोटॉन्स हैं वो सेम है या अलग है राइट सो हियर आई हैव दी टू प्रोटॉन्स एंड हियर आई हैव टू आई हैव थ्री प्रोटॉन्स राइट अब मैं क्या करूंगी आई सिंपली रिप्लेस इन माई माइंड द प्रोटॉन्स राइट सो फर्स्ट लेट मी रिप्लेस द मेथिलीन प्रोटॉन्स हियर दैट इज दी एच टू प्रोटॉन्स right so here i'll get the two things that is ch3 is as it is right ek cl hai ek hydrogen ko main as it is rakhti hu aur dusre ko main change karke z lagati hu right aur iske sath hi mujhe dusra jo milega wo kya rahega ch3 c cl ab main niche wala hydrogen ko same rakhti hu aur upar wale ko main change karti hu right so you can see that i have got here the two products राइट क्या इन दोनों प्रोडक्ट्स में कोई भी डिफरेंस है इफ आई टेक द जनरल फॉर्मूला ऑफ दीज टू आई विल गेट सी एच थ्री सी एच जेड सी एल राइट सो देर इज नो डिफरेंस इन द टू हाइड्रोजेंस राइट जो मुझे दो मॉलिक्यूल्स मिले वो कैसे हैं दे आर सेम नाउ let me just replace the methyl protons matlab ch3 ke protons ko ab main change karungi right so here i have a possibility to get the three structures ab main ch2 cl2 ko main rakhungi common right now i have to just change the hydrogens right yahan pe maine do hydrogens ko same rakhe hain main ek ko z rakhungi yahan pe main ek dusre hydrogen ko change karungi aur do ko same hydrogens mein rakhti hu right and in the third case i'll exchange the third one right maine teeno protons ko yahan pe change kiya now if i see the general formula of this right can you notice any difference in the structure here general formula i'll get as the ch2 z sorry here i'll get ch2 z ch2 cl teeno ka formula same hua it means that the three protons here right that is the three hydrogen atoms they are equivalent they are chemically equivalent whereas yahan pe jo do hydrogen the these two hydrogens they are here chemically equivalent right it means that यहाँ के दो हाइड्रोजन सेम हैं, यहाँ की तीनों हाइड्रोजन सेम हैं। बट इफ आई कंपेयर दीज टू स्ट्रक्चर्स एक का फॉर्मूला है सी एच टू जेड सी एच टू सी एल एंड दिस इज सी एच थ्री सी एच जेड सी एल राइट द टू फॉर्मूलाज आर डिफरेंट इट मीन्स दैट दिस एच थ्री and this two protons they are not equivalent it means they are non equivalent protons right so in this molecule i have two kinds of protons so mujhe kitne signals milenge yahan pe here i'll get the two signals for the two different kinds of protons clear in this way i can find out that which are equivalent and which are the non equivalent protons okay now here you can see that this molecule right 
this carbon has four different groups attached to it right similar here here also i have four different groups attached to the central carbon so such carbon atoms which has the all the four different groups attached they are called as the chiral carbons or they are also called as the stereo centers clear इनको हम कहते हैं कैरल कार्बन या फिर सी स्टीरियो सेंटर्स राइट लेट अस डिस्कस दिस इन फर्दर डिटेल राइट लेट मी मेक इट इन अ क्लियर वे नाउ दैट वाज सी एच थ्री सी सी एल राइट एंड हियर आई हैव सेट एन एच एंड दिस इज माय कैरल कार्बन right similarly the other was c cl ch3 here there is a z and here it is the h right and this is my chiral carbon right these two protons are what they are chemically equivalent they are seen at the same positions right and these two molecules these are called as the pair of anion schoomers theek hai kya kehte hain inko they are called as the pair of anion schoomers and these protons h a and h b these are called as the enantiotopic protons right what is it called it is called as the enantiotopic protons right and they appear at the same same chemical shift value therefore they are the chemically equivalent right now you might be thinking what are these enantiomers right so enantiomers are the mirror images of each other that are non superimposable right enantiomers aise molecules hain jo ek dusre ke mirror images to zarur hain right like the two hands these are mirror images of each other but दे के नॉट बी सुपर इम्पोज अगर मैं मेरे दूसरे हाथ को उठा के अपने पहले हाथ पे रखू तो दे डू नॉट सुपर इम्पोज एग्जैक्टली राइट दैट इज माई बोथ हैंड आर वॉट दे आर एन एन शोमस राइट सो दीज टू प्रोटॉन्स आर दी एन एन शो टॉपिक प्रोटॉन्स क्लियर नाउ लेट एस डिस्कस दी अनादर टाइप फॉर एग्जाम्पल i have an another molecule where i have c double bond c i have a methyl group i have a bro bromine right and i have the two hydrogens here also in this molecule if i replace the two hydrogens with certain z right so here i'll get ch3 br hydrogen z plus another molecule i'll have z h ch3 and br right here you can see that the two molecules they are not the mirror images of each other right and they are non superimposable also here you can see this hydrogen is trans to br whereas this hydrogen is cis to br that means what they are chemically different their chemical environments are different therefore both the protons they are chemically inequivalent right therefore in this case we will get the two different peaks and these pairs are called as the 
diastereotopic pairs and the protons are called as the diastereotopic protons right inhe hum kya kehte hain inhe hum diastereotopic protons kehte hain right so what will be the definition of a diastereo uh diastereo mers right it will be that they are the non mirror images that are non superimposable on each other right so this will be the definition of the diastereomers the another example here would be if you take a molecule right which has the two hydrogen atoms one chlorine another hydrogen right here i have another chlorine and i have a ch3 group since this carbon atom has all the four groups attached are different therefore this is what it is a stereo center right so now i have to repeat i have i am talking about these two hydrogen atoms mujhe check karna hai ki wo chemically equivalent hai ya nahi hai so what i'll do i'll simply replace it with the some other group right so this is same right in both the molecules this will be same ab mujhe kya karna hai i am replacing keeping the h same and replacing the second set uh, h with z and here i'll replace this one and this h remain same now here you can see that these two hydrogens they are cis to each other right whereas these two hydrogens they are trans to each other right and also here there is a stereo center and here also all the four atoms are different so ab ye bhi ban gaya stereo center right and since these two molecules they are not mirror images of each other right agar aap isko yahan tak dekho to shayad mirror image lag sakta hai but the second half is not the mirror image right since neither they are they are the mirror images neither they are superimposable on each other right agar aap isko utha ke iske upar rakhoge so ye z yahan aa jayega it means they are non superimposable images therefore they are the pairs of diastereomers right and these two protons they are the diastereotopic protons clear so in this way you can find out the chemically equivalent and the non equivalent protons right now let us solve some questions right just solve some examples over here so the first one here is the ch3 CH2 Cl. Just now we did it. So these two protons are chemically equivalent as compared to these ones, right? So this is A, this is B. So in this case, I'll get the two signals, right? The second example here is what? It is CH3 CH. CH3 Cl right here you can see that these two protons have one CH in the middle right so they both are chemically equivalent therefore this should be of the same type right whereas this hydrogen has one chlorine and two CH3 groups dono side mein or since there is only one hydrogen matlab wo ek alag type ka hai so b right so here i also get the two signals correct in the third example i have ch3 c double bond o ch3 right here you can see that i have the two groups of the protons but 
the chemical environment of both the protons is one and the same right therefore they both are equivalent therefore i'll get a single signal over here clear now if i take the fourth example that is a di substituted benzene here i have a ch3 group and here i have a ch3 group right so in this example you can see that the two ch3 groups right they both are attached opposite to the benzene ring right and even if we can decide on the basis of the plane of the symmetry which can divide the molecules into the two equal halves right so here there is one plane which can divide it and here there is the another plane which can divide it in the molecule right so here you can see that these two protons have the chemical equivalent groups so this is a and this is also a right and these four hydrogens which are present over here right they all have the same chemical environment therefore they all are same right so in this case i'll get the two signals clear in the next example if i see here i have cl h h and h right so if i talk about the protons this cl has one hydrogen here so this hydrogen is one type right this hydrogen has one hydrogen here and one hydrogen here right whereas this hydrogen has one chlorine and one hydrogen right so there is a possibility that this should be something different and this is something different therefore here we have the three signals right okay now let us discuss some more examples that is the fifth one it is a cyclobutane here we have the two protons at all the four carbons right and all the four carbons uh, all the hydrogens present at the four carbons are equivalent here because they all have the same chemical environment therefore it will show only one signal clear okay now if i take an another example over here that is a cyclopropane right which has the two methyl groups above and below and the rest are the hydrogen atoms okay so here you can see that the two methyl groups which are present above and below right upar wale ko facing mein there are two hydrogens right and niche wale ko bhi facing mein there are two hydrogens it means that both the methyl groups are same therefore they will be a a right and if you see this hydrogen right upar wale ko ek side mein ek methyl hai dusre side mein niche wale ko bhi side mein ek methyl hai right similar is the case with the, this hydrogens also so the chemical environment of both the hydrogens is what it is one and the same therefore they are the b so in this case we'll get only the two signals right if i have an another cyclopropene right where i have only one me group and all the rest are the hydrogens right so what has happened here ek hi ch3 hai right wo bhi upar niche there is no ch3 matlab wo apna ek alag signal dega right now ye jo
hydrogen cell okay they have one me above and the another m and niche kya hai there is a hydrogen correct and this also has one hydrogen above and the another hydrogen below right so both these hydrogens groups they are having the same environment so they'll show a signal that is the b right whereas this hydrogen it will show another signal that is c so here i'll get the three signals clear so you have to see the this is the cyclopropane ring uske upar ka environment aur niche ka environment jiske chemical environment same hai wo ek tarah ke signal denge jiske chemical environments alag hain they will give us the different kind of the signals right for example if i have another cyclopropene right jiske upar side mein do me hai and all the rest ones are the hydrogen right so what will happen in this case both the me are above dono bhi me ke niche kya hai hydrogen dono bhi me ke idhar parallel mein ek hydrogen hai right it means that the both the me are same so they will give me the same signal similarly jo niche wale hydrogen hai wo bhi same hai unke chemical environment same hai so they will give me the signal b and now if we talk about this hydrogen राइट right? एक हाइड्रोजन को ऊपर दो एम ई है और दूसरे हाइड्रोजन को नीचे तीनों दो हाइड्रोजन है मतलब दोनों भी हाइड्रोजन के एनवायरमेंट कैसे हैं डिफरेंट देर फॉर हियर आई गेट दिस इज डिफरेंट एंड दिस इज डिफरेंट सो सी एंड डी देर फॉर हियर आई गेट दी फोर सिग्नल्स क्लियर सो दिस इज हाउ यू हैव टू प्रोजेक्ट द नंबर ऑफ द chemical equivalent and the non chemical equivalent protons right so now let us discuss one of the questions which has come in the examinations that is of the the structure i'll draw you have to tell the number of the equivalent carbon atoms or the number of the signals it will show right so this is the structure and the options are a is 7 b is 8 c is 9 and d is 10 okay now we have to first see that kahan kahan pe yahan pe hydrogens hain yahan pe there will be three hydrogen yahan pe rahega ek yahan pe ek yahan ek yahan do यहाँ एक यहाँ पे रहेंगे तीन यहाँ पे रहेंगे तीन यहाँ पे कोई रहेगा नो हियर देर इज नो हाइड्रोजन राइट नाउ दिस थ्री हाइड्रोजन आर अवे फ्रॉम होल्ड रिंग राइट सो इसका मुझे एक अलग सिग्नल मिलना चाहिए राइट सो दिस इज सपोज इट इज ए राइट नाउ टॉकिंग अबाउट this methyl groups both the methyl groups are upwards right above the plane right so both the methyls having the two bonds downwards that means both the methyl are what they are equivalent so dono ne ek hi signal dikhana chahiye so in dono ka aa jayega b clear so this will show c d right obviously they are different e f clear so here these protons right one is above and the second is below एक को दो सी एच थ्री का इंट्रैक्शन हो रहा है एंड नीचे वाले को देर इज नो सी एच थ्री इंट्रैक्शन इट मीन दे बोथ विल शो दी डिफरेंट सिग्नल सो दिस इज जी एंड दिस इज एच 
नाउ लेट अस रीथिंक अबाउट दिस बी जो हमने दोनों भी मेथिल को सेम ग्रुप दिया है क्या वो सच में सेम रहेंगे जस्ट थिंक अबाउट इट कैसा रहेगा वो Here, if you notice, one CH3 is this side, another CH3 is this side. इस वाले Me को there is a double bond over there and a single hydrogen. Whereas ये वाले को there are the two hydrogens above and below, so there is an interaction with the hydrogen. So the chemical environment of the two Me will change. Therefore, this assumption is wrong, and both of them will show the two different peaks right so this will remain as b and the another will be i so total how many peaks 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so there are the nine different kinds of protons that is there are the nine non equivalent protons and hence the answer here comes out to be 9 right so you just have to think about the chemical equivalence unka environment kaisa hai right so in this way if you solve you can really solve